And now let's practice deciding whether we reject or fail to reject H0 based on just the critical values. There's another method we'll talk about in a minute. Remember that our critical value creates something called the critical region, where it's our shaded region, and we use the phrase, if he's shady, then reject him. And then the other piece of information is don't forget that when we say that we reject or fail to reject, we always need to end with the statement H0. So the phrase is fail to reject H0, reject H0. And I know I just highlighted those in the opposite order I set them. Okay, so here is my first problem where I'm using TS to stand for test statistic and CV to stand for critical value. So I'm given all the pertinent information I need to decide whether I reject or fail to reject H0. So the first thing I notice is I have a right tail test right, because this is like an arrow pointing to my right. And because I'm using P, which um, percents always use the Z table, I have the bell-shaped curve. And so, yeah, I would expect a positive critical value in the three or smaller range, but I don't know, all the right tail tests are positive. So I look at my bell-shaped curve, centered at zero, and I draw my right critical value on the right side and shade to the right of that. And next I want to look at my test statistic of positive 1.38. So if this is a number line, positive 1.38 would be a little bit to the left of the critical value, so it's not in the shaded region, so I do not reject. I fail to reject H0. I always like to use the analogy, imagine that my cutoff point is $1.45. I've told you you could spend up to $1.45 on candy, and anything more than that, I'm going to reject you. So if you test me and say, hey, look, I just found this candy for $1.38, can I buy it? I'm not going to reject you. I'm going to say, sure, you can buy it. A, don't ask me why I'm talking about candy, and B, I know candy doesn't come in any of these prices, but whatever. Okay. Next example, example B. I have a left tail test because H1 is pointed to the left. Notice it's for standard deviation. So I'm using the chi-squared table, which means I have a chi-squared curve. Starts at zero and it's right skewed. So my critical value of 4.166 is actually still on the left side for my left tail test because my curve starts at zero. So now I'm interested in my test statistic, and 7.633 is over here to the right. It's not in my shaded region, so I do not reject it. it. He's not shady. Don't reject him. I don't know why it's a him. We can reject her next time. Um, now notice this time the test statistic is on the right of the critical value. The problem before the test statistic was on the left of the critical value, but again, it didn't fall in the shaded region, so again, we didn't reject. So it really matters what type of test you have so you know it's not just always on the left or the right. Like on this case, it's a left tail test, so it's lower. So like my cutoff value might be don't let your bank account balance drop below $1.16. And if your bank account balance is $7.63, I'm going to fail to reject you or kick you out of my bank. Again, I know weird balances. Okay, a last example. I have not equal to, so it's a two-tail test. Yep, I got plus or minus. I got two critical values. Mu means I'm using the bell-shaped curve. So I've got my bell shape centered over zero. My two critical values are drawn in. And now I need to look at my test statistic of negative 214. And on a number line, this time it fell in the shaded region. So this time I rejected it. If she's shady, reject her. 